Okay, electron dot structures or Lewis dot structures, okay, from the, um, the founder's name of it, okay? No problem. So we look at Lewis dot structures. Alrighty. Sometimes it's called dot structures. Now these guys right here are very nice to use, especially in a periodic table topic and in the topic of bonding, right? So once again, chemistry is very foundational. To understand Lewis dot structures, you have to understand the structures and uh, how the um, electron configuration of the atom is composed, right? Then you have to understand what the, each particular thing means. You have to know their regular energy levels from the valence shells and so on, right? So once again, review, review, review. That those previous structure of the atom, the, um, how, the, how the energy levels work, what does a valence electron mean, what does a valence shell mean, and so on, okay? Because if you don't know that, Join these dot structures and everything not, not gonna make much sense, okay? So no problem. So let's start with a neutral atom. Alrighty. For a neutral atom, guys, okay, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. That's very, very important to us. Now we learned this when we did um constant subatomic particles, right? That if the atom's neutral same number of protons, same number of electrons. So let's just choose um, an element. Let's choose, I'd like either lithium or sodium. So I'm gonna choose sodium. Now sodium, Na, right, is, has a configuration of two, eight, one in the ground state, right? Now guys, in terms of the dot structures for a neutral atom, okay, I'm gonna write the rule here. One, show valence, electrons around the elements, okay? All right, that's all you gotta do basically for the neutral atom. Now, for no point number two, right? The elements in the dot structure, the elements represents something called the kernel. Now the kernel in turn is the atom, all the atom, except the valence. Okay, the valence the electrons. Okay, so the whole atom except the valence electrons. That's the kernel. So if you have to do, right, the dot structure for sodium, what you do, you write down Na, down, all right, that's your kernel and now you represent your valence electrons. Now the thing is now you have to know what valence electrons are, right? So valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell. I'll write it down someplace. Okay, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost. Outermost energy level or outermost shell. So how many electrons do we have? How many valence electrons does sodium have? You got two, eight, one. So this is energy level number one right here, where the two is. That's energy level number two, where the eight is, okay? And this is energy level number three. Energy level number three is the outermost energy level, okay? So inside of energy level number three, there's only one valence electron for sodium. So sodium only gets one dot, okay? No problem. So as long as you know the outermost energy level represents the valence electrons, for example, if they ask you to do something like chlorine, for example, you look at your reference table, you notice, right, that chlorine is 287, that's seven valence electrons in the outermost shell, it gets seven dots, okay, bam, and so on. So neutral atoms, very simple, no problem. So, let's move on. Let's move to negative ions. Now, negative ions, right? How is a negative ion formed? Now, once again, chemistry being foundational, I'll say it over and over again. You got to know that ions, right, are formed by what? By loss or gain of electrons, right? Do not, do not change the protons. So, in terms of negative ions, right, the rule is you show eight dots, right? Now, the exception is going to be hydrogen except for H, 
Okay. You put brackets. Okay. And you show your charge, people. Don't forget the charge. If it's an ion, it must carry a charge. If it's a negative ion, you've got to, got to show the negative charge, all right? So I've seen um, ingredients exams where students, you know, did everything correctly, put the A dots, put the brackets, or forgot the charge, and, you know, they didn't get any credit. So, how are we going to do this? Let's say we have Cl minus, right? Chloride ion. And they ask you to show the dot structure for this guy. You don't panic. You look at it normally, right? Normally, chlorine, regular chlorine, Cl, would have been 2, 8, 7, right? Now, here's the deal. Now, this ties in with bonding and periodic table. Many of the atoms on the periodic table, a number of them, they're trying to get a full valence shell, okay? A full valence shell, all right here. A full valence shell. Shell, okay, S H E L L, represents stability, people, okay? So if you got seven in your valence shell, you're one away from harmony, nirvana, right? So these guys on the right side, the non metals on the right side, we'll talk about non metals later on, they tend to gain electrons because seven plus one more gets him eight, right? So we know he's negative, we know he gained one more. So if he gains one more, remember it's all about the valence shell, he gains one more here. Gains one more electron, okay? His configuration now is gonna be two, eight, eight, okay? Now, this has a special name. It's called a noble gas configuration, all right? Why do they call it that? Because it's behaving like the guys in group 18 are called noble gas. And now, once again, my students, we didn't do all this yet. Don't panic, it's not on the test. But later on, when we get to periodic table, definitely we'll talk about the group names and noble gases and so on, okay? But this is for any students in other classes that may have started this um, topic of, um, you know, um, dot structures. No problem, this is for you, okay? Alrighty. So 288 is the um, electron configuration of the chloride Cl minus ion. Now, how do you do the dot structure? You're going to show eight dots. So you're going to put Cl, right? You put eight dots around it, okay, put your brackets, and you don't forget the charge. The charge is negative one, you put a negative there, you can put negative one if you want to, either or, okay, and you're done. Let's say you got sulfur, right? Sulfur is going to be what? Normally, sulfur is what? Sulfur is two, eight, six, right? Now, if they ask you to do the sulfide ion, S minus two, right? Okay, what's going to happen? He's trying to get how many in the valence shell again? I forgot. He's trying to get eight in the valence shell. So what's he going to do? He's going to gain two more electrons. Two more electrons. So he's going to become two, eight, eight. Do you see a pattern? This is two, eight, eight. This guy is two, eight, eight. Okay, and there's a special name for that. Anytime you have different substances, right? Okay, with the same or different ions with the same or ions and atoms with the same electron configuration, they are called isoelectronic. All right, they're isoelectronic with each other, they have the same electron configuration. All right, no problem. So they both have noble gas configurations of argon, if I'm not mistaken. No problem. So, how would you do the dot structure for S minus 2? You would simply Put your S down, represents a kernel, and you put your eight dots around it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You put your brackets, and you put your charge. Now be careful, this is minus two. Bam, minus two goes there, okay? And you're done, alrighty. So next one, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do, um, oh goodness, positive ions. You know what, let's do it right now. Let's just continue. All right, this over, bam. Positive ions. Now, for positive ions, they're pretty cool also. Let's say we got sodium. Let's do sodium, all right? We did sodium with a neutral atom. Let's do sodium with a positive ion and compare and contrast. So, sodium, as we said before, right, is 2, 8, 1. 
Now, if you look on your reference table, right, sodium, the top right corner, you'll see sodium tends to form a positive bond, Na plus one, right? There's a reason for that. Sodium is a metal, and metals tend to lose their electrons. Now, once again, guys, and my, my students, we didn't do all this yet. Don't panic. This is for students who probably ventured into this already. No problem. I, tend, I will teach this in a um, periodic table topic, not, not the atomic structure. No problem. All right. So what's happening, we agreed, when you form a positive ion? A, to form a positive ion, right, means that you did what? You lost an electron. Okay. Very, very important. You lose negative to become more positive. The analogy is going on vacation, right? You lose, you lose negative, you become more positive. Okay, cool. So, if you lose an electron, right, what does this configuration of 281 become? Now, remember, guys, it's always, always about the valence shell. They're special, right? They get lost, they get gained, they get shared, yes? So, bam, 2-8, this guy gets lost, and now you can consider it to be what? Empty. This shell's empty, yes? So you reflect that when you do the dust structure for positive ions. So let's write the rules down, okay? For positive ions, okay? One, show no dots, okay? No dots. Now, number two is a little controversial. I tell my students, show brackets. Some Teachers, some textbooks say, you know, don't use brackets, but I just show the brackets, all right? But three is important. You must also show your charge. If you're an ion, you carry a charge, okay? There's no debating about it, all right? No problem. So, for Na plus one to show the dot structure for the positive ion, okay? You write Na down. That's your kernel, right? But in the valence electron, is nothing, so we represent that as put no dots there, yes? You put your brackets and you put your plus one there, you're good to go. Now let's say they ask you to do the dot structure for barium, right? Ba2 plus, right? You put your barium down, all right? It's a positive ion, so you're gonna show no dots. You got your brackets, but you must, must, must put your charge. And what's the charge on barium? It's plus two, bam, you're done. It's a positive ion, no dots, okay? Negative ions, eight dots. And for neutral atoms, all you gotta do is just put whatever valence electrons a neutral atom has on the kernel, you're good to go. All right guys, take care.